My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Yeah, certainly. So my name is Matt Sweeting. I'm a real estate broker here in Nassau, Bahamas. Uh, excited to be on with you guys. I follow your content. Really, really love it. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for being here. So let's dive into it. I know there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there and with this whole entire circumstances that we're going through, they might be inclined in getting a supplemental income, maybe moving from their nine to five or really diving into their business more full time or their side hustle, whatever the case might be. They're looking to generate extra income and times have changed. What are some of the recommendations that could come from you initially when you started your journey on entrepreneurship? What were a couple of things that helped you? Yeah, yeah, I, I, this is a very, very good question. Matter of fact, I just um, uh, wrote a, a blog piece uh, entitled How to Avoid Drowning in the COVID Crisis. And it really talks about a number of things someone should do right now. One of the things they should do is, is do an appraisal. I, I'm a real estate broker, and one of the terms we know well in real estate is having an appraisal done. And so the first thing someone should do is do an appraisal of themselves. Now, this requires some self-awareness. Um, and so you need to determine what are my skills? What do I have or what can I develop that someone might be willing to pay me for? And so you might be good at sewing. You might be good at drawing. You might be good at, at writing. What are your talents? And then you want to put those in a list and kind of use that to determine, okay, what of this list might work in this new normal that we're working in now. And so me as a real estate broker, I've thought about that. I have dabbled in, in my time coming up in real estate. I've had to produce my own video and I've had to produce my own websites. And so I have had to do this assessment for myself in trying to think of what businesses could operate in this new normal that we're all in that could make money um, that, that I have the talents to do. And so that's the thought. The first step is determining what you're good at and how could this work in this new economy? That's awesome. And then how did you go about learning? Because I feel like uh, and as an entrepreneur, now you got to be wearing different hats. You got to be having different skills and, and, and or at least know where to go to get the right person assigned to that task. I think entrepreneurs now, how many hours should you spend in learning and, and, and improving yourself if you're going to run a business? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And, and there are a number of schools, on, schools of thought on this. And I'm, I'm perplexed on which direction is more right than the other. Some might reason. One school of thought might suggest just start, right? And figure it out as you go along. Because the best lessons you'll get is in the practical execution of it, as opposed to the theoretical study of it, right? Um, and then there's another school of thought that, that says that you should try to learn as much as you could before executing. Um, I'm, I'm somewhere in between. I like to start and learn through the process. And so whatever that idea is, if, if we were to take web design, for example, I have a little bit of skill there. Well, how about I, I, I uh, promote that I'll offer free web design services for the first five people. And in return, I get to learn the logistics of it. And, and meanwhile, when I reach those roadblocks, like let's assume someone wants a contact form or they want a pop-up uh, on their website. And I've, I've done that, I've done web design, but I don't know how to do that. Okay, well now I could go to YouTube or now I could go to a guru and figure out how to do that and overcome that hurdle. I love it. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like you, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in between. I don't like to read too much about it, but I also know that if you don't put it into motion, you lose that excitement and enthusiasm also too. So you want to get things moving as much as possible, but keep your eyes open during that process. You need to know that it's the level of consciousness that you should know that you are missing things. Don't think it's perfect. Just keep your eyes open and adjust as you go. The other yeah. question that I had is, is books and courses and really on the other side of self-development that doesn't have to do with skill. Like it has to do with mindset and self-development. How did you go about that? What are you doing to learn every day? Mm. Good question as well. I, I, I follow a lot of, <laughs> and again, this is, this is something I'm kind of perplexed about as well, because I've had these points in my social media life where I've unfollowed everybody because I believe it's a distraction. 
And then I've had points in my life where I follow a number of people along the lines of the interests that I have, um, just so that I'm inspired, so that I know what's happening in the marketplace. And so, you know, again, if we follow this thought, I, I'll, I'll consider real estate and let's pursue this, this theory of web design. I'm going to follow people who are leaders in the industry and, and so that I stay uh, focused on where the industry is. Same thing with real estate. Um, as it relates to mindset, I follow a number of people who, whose business, like yourself, are around motivation, are around mindset, and kind of use that to, to help me with self-awareness, help me with mindset, help me stay focused. I definitely think that's a fantastic idea following the people that you inspire to become or have some similarity. You don't, you, can, you can't be the same, but have some similarities in common. Now, here's my other question for you. How often do you get yourself involved in mastermind groups where you're collaborating, doing teamwork? And I don't like, I don't like the word brainstorming because that's just like destruction storm is not good but sharing thoughts and ideas and bouncing ideas off of other people you know when i when i read the book and i see you got it dan you all you always reference it i i see that you're very intentional in making sure that that's in the in the uh, lower third of your frame there and 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 the book obviously heavily promotes uh the mastermind theory you know, I haven't had tremendous or considerable success uh, being involved with groups um, that that have that follow the the Napoleon Hill mastermind theory, and it, and it just be because it might be because my own uh, unique situation. Um, but a couple of issues that I've had with them are, are usually I have not been in groups where we're all aligned and see the mission of working together towards a collaborative goal. Um, it could be- And that's that a key element. That's it, a key it, it element. Key. Because Definitely. everything else becomes teamwork. Teamwork is different than a mastermind. Teamwork yep. is we're working on a project. You do this, I do that, great. And the end result might be pushing forward a project, but our individual goals are not being met where I'm, I'm forwarding a specific business. So that's different. A lot of people confuse teamwork and mastermind. And you got to be in a good one for you to know the difference. You got to feel it. You got to be in it to see. But I do see your point. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll, I'd like, like you to respond to that on how, uh, how can I identify a, a, a real mastermind synergy as opposed to that, what, what I might have experienced in the past. Um, but but I think I think that that might be the issue why I believe that I've never been a part of a mastermind group of people that are focused on hey guys we want to achieve brand awareness for all of our brands and we want to collaboratively reach a million a million followers over all of our platforms right and so we're going to support each other's uh, uh, lives we're going to support each other's content blah 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 I yeah, that's have teamwork that that's total teamwork. Mastermind groups are not paid. There's no true mastermind group that you have to pay in. Now, if you're paying in, it's because you're going and learning something and you're paying someone for their time, which is totally fine, but we're throwing the word mastermind group out there just like that. There's no mastermind group that you pay $6 to get in because right. it shouldn't be like that. Typically, a, a true mastermind group, anywhere between two to about seven under 10 is the optimal situation. And a mastermind group, people are coming together for one goal, one project, one thing that they're going to have in common. And predominantly, that has to do with them forwarding an agenda. So it's different. For example, four or five coaches or instructors or influencers can get together and they're putting a course on how to... Um, how to do your goal setting better and how to figure out a vision board. They're putting a, a whole entire course together like that, let's say, right? And then they're coming together. So one person takes this chapter, one person takes that chapter. You do the social media, I'm doing this. But before that gets moving, we're all talking about how we're going to benefit from it, how we're making money off of it, how we're giving back to people, What's the value? What we take? Like those discussions are happening and everybody's agreeing. So they're all in a mutual understanding of it. But a lot of times it can intertwine 
with me helping you in marketing, for example, uh, mm. that we got a person in there. I'm like, listen, by the way, Jack, I got to help you with this marketing on your business. And you're going to help me with that press release when I, you know, you're a better writer than I am. So there's a lot of small mini collaborations happening meanwhile, but people are doing it voluntarily. People are, do, they do, they do get enjoyment from being part of that mastermind group. It's not just task driven that you do this, I do that. There's a whole entire collaboration going on where the environment is that it's a safe environment where you could come in with any of your challenges or turbulences or anything you got in personal and business. And these people are becoming, you are becoming their right hand man, left hand man, and they are becoming part of your inner circle. So you can go to them for consultation and advice when the time is right that you need it. So it's kind of like, I don't want to call it like the sisterhood and the brotherhood, but my wife has gone to all girls Catholic school and all girls Catholic school. They're, they're like more bonded together than blood sisters. Right. So whenever they have challenges, you always see them have a text group, text message of four or five of them in there. That's a mastermind group. Well, I did this with my baby. What do you think of that? Or my husband did this. Or we're adding this to our house. We'll do it. So there's a lot of r close relationship where trust is not an issue. Money is not an issue. Who said what is not an issue. So all of those things have been filtered out. Right. It's true being authentic and you don't. Mm. Now, I do see the challenge if you get five real estate agents together in the mastermind <laughs> group. That may not work. You know, it's there's got to be a lot of trust where you want to make sure that they don't take your clients. But it, it's 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 different. It could it could be it's possible, but most probably in your situation, you want to get other people. You need to be in a mastermind group of somebody who's in social media. Mm. somebody who's in uh, mortgages, lending maybe, that they don't do real estate, somebody in, um, anybody that has to do with networking, communicate right. with people, events, seminars, all of that, and somebody else who's uh, uh, a type of a coach. It could be a fitness coach, mindset coach, transformational coach. So now you have like five, six people, and everybody comes in, with different sets of skill set, mm. where it's not like over, you know, it, it's, you let the marketing person do the marketing. Right. You know what I'm saying? We're not going back and forth debating on which style is better. You letting this person handle that part. So they feel like, okay, I got this. I should go do my best. I could make mistakes in the process, but you're giving that freedom to people that they could mess up. It's okay. But they'll just be able to share with the group and contribute to the outcome of the group. It's not easy. But yeah. Napoleon Hill talked about it, that if you're part of a good mastermind group and is ran efficiently, it could be very profitable, not in just monetary, but in a lot of other aspects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you need to, but going back to my original question for self-development, can you tell us what's your daily routine? Like, do you have a daily routine? What What are some of the things that you think are important on, on for entrepreneurs to have on their daily routine? Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest things that aren't talked about, and I'll, I'll start with this and then I'll go into some of the things I do during the day is forgiveness. Uh, oftentimes with us as entrepreneurs and ambitious people, we are our biggest critics. Um, and when we fail, I was, I was listening to some of your content earlier, uh, and we talk about us setting these ambitious goals for ourselves and then not hitting it. And what do you do thereafter? And oftentimes that could lead, in, in my case, it has led to depression and a feeling of failure and the like. And so I think one of the things I've, I've probably implemented over the last year or two is forgiving myself for failing when I do. Um, but then using that as, a, as, a, as kind of a strategy, as kind of a learning lesson to move forward, right? And so, you know, I, when I get up, and again, you know, COVID-19 and Corona has totally thrown off my normal routine, but under normal circumstances, 
uh, once I get into office. So it, it, some, oftentimes I'm going to bed with the thought of what does the next day look like? And I'm kind of pondering over that. I'm, I'm almost falling to sleep with that thought in my mind and then waking up with it as well. And so uh, as I drive to work, I'm, I'm giving this more thought, what do I need to execute on? And then I get right into lists, uh, preparing a list once I sit down at my desk. And so I'm writing down a list of probably about 40 things that I need to execute on this day, or I need to at least move forward. I, I drew the illustration before, again, in another blog about real estate. And I, I think every um, business is like a tennis game. And, and if you know anything about tennis, the objective is to get, is to volley the ball back into the next side as successful as possible. Uh, and you want to get it back over there as quick as possible as well. My goal is to do that with as many balls, as many games, and, and every client, every interaction, every project is like this kind of game that I'm trying to move that ball back into the next person's uh, side of the net as quick as possible. And so once I, once I get that written down, I'm, I'm on it and I'm focused and I'm, I, sometime I try to zone out. We have a kind of a new system at work where a number of us are working in, in the same space. And I find that a bit challenging for someone who likes to be focused, put on your music. I don't want to talk to anybody. Um, but, but that's. I could that's never do that. I could never work in that. That, that is a big no, no. I yeah. got my door locked. I'm focused. I'm on it. You know, I leave my door open once in a while where, you know, people can come in, but I'm doing unimportant things. Yeah. But when I'm zoned in, when I do programming, when I'm sitting down, when I'm doing Excels or whatever, I'm 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 in the zone. Nobody can yeah. mess with that. So yeah. I see, I mean it does make sense to go to sleep with the with the thought of what I'm how how am I gonna do things tomorrow. I could totally see that. I mean I do it once in a while, but intentionally I'm not doing it every single day. So mm -hmm. but let's say I, you got to get some of your blogs on your IG page so I could see it. Maybe link it over there so I could see it. I didn't even know you had the blog. So definitely either send us the link or put it on your bio on your IG so we could go and check it out and then be able to kind of read out and follow up, see what's going on. Well done. Thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. I appreciate it. Hopefully we can do more. You stay yep. safe. I appreciate it, brother. Talk soon. You got to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.